so good morning to all of you today we are going to discuss about the timing analysis of the digital circuits so the timing analysis is basically basically related to the timing of the digital circuits so as we know uh, we want to have the designs which are faster in operations so that we can assess the inputs quickly and we can process the inputs or the data quickly so more faster is the circuit more quickly we will be able to process the data as well as we will be able to sample the new data so it is very important to understand the issues related to the timing in the digital designs so that we can design our circuits faster so today and the next lectures we will understand the issues related to the timing okay so let's go further so how do we define the timing analysis so the timing analysis basically refers to the analysis of the designs for the timing issues all the issues related to the timing in the digital designs will be disk will be analyzed in this so static time analysis is one of the technique to verify the timing of the digital designs we have the other techniques also but static time analysis is one such technique to analyze the real timings related to the digital designs so an alternative approach used to verify the timing is the timing simulations this is different from the static time analysis so in the timing analysis we verify the functionality as well as the timing of the digital designs okay so i will tell you the difference between the static time analysis and the timing simulations so how they are different from each other and uh, what are the advantages of sta over the timing simulation so please uh, unmute you and uh, please mute your mics some examples of the timing checks are set up and hold time checks and to find the maximum frequency of operation the maximum frequency operation will tell you how quickly you will be able to perform the operation within a given time frame or within a given time period so for lesser is the time period more faster will the frequency and more quickly you will be able to process your signal within that time period so these uh, the timing analysis includes a settlement time, hold time violations as well as to find the maximum frequency of operation so sta is basically a static time analysis the static in this in the sense that since the analysis of the design is carried out statistically and does not depend statically and does not depend on the data values being applied to the input pins so it means in the st analysis we don't apply the inputs to our digital designs and the analysis is carried out through the through the uh, the constraint that we give to our input files and the delays that are within the circuit but this is in contrast to the simulation based on the timing analysis where a stimulus is applied on the input signals and output is verified so in comparison to sta if we do the timing simulations then we have to apply the inputs vectors to our in, uh, to inputs to the uh, input vectors to our inputs as well as to verify the outputs when it is a x axis is time so this is the flow chart of the static time analysis in this we have a design under analysis that is called dua and we give the external uh, environment to our design this external environment consists of the clock definition your setup definition your hold values uh, uh, sorry your clock definitions your supply voltages and the design under test is the your circuit so output of this uh, is given to the static time analysis after that the output from the sta is generated in the form of timing reports so when any violation occurs then it it is flagged or in the outside in the output report so we can analyze the output report from where we can find where the violation has occurred or not so what is sta so sta is basically a static time analysis it is one of the technique used to verify the timing of the digital designs 
so sta is a complete and exhaustive verification of all the timing checks of the designs means it is sta is itself a complete and exhaustive verification of all the timing checks in the digital design and you need not to apply any input vectors for this so why we do the sta let us understand this now we know sta what is sta but why we are why we need to do the sta so as we know as i have discussed earlier also timing analysis method such as simulation that you perform in your labs can only verify the portion of the design that get exercised by the stimulus means if you have a bigger design and you are applying the inputs to a small part of your design then the timing analysis will be performed only on that part because you have applied the inputs to only a small part of your design so it means my only that small part will be exercised or will be analyzed through the timing simulations so verification through the timing simulations will only be exhaustive as the vectors are used lesser is the vectors lesser is the input vectors or lesser will be the amount of analysis that can be done through the timing simulations so for more coverage of the design you need to have the larger input vectors need to be applied so that will increase the simulation time because more vectors are there at the input side more simulation has to be uh, performed by the simulation tools and also to simulate and verify all the timing conditions of a design with let us say 10 to 100 million gates within a chip or ic is very very slow then because the uh, number of number of transistor number of gates are larger now so if you apply a larger input vectors then that will take a lot of time in the simulations so your simulation your simulation time will be now slower okay and timings cannot be verified completely because it will take a lot of time now in the verification so you have to wait for the longer durations so this is one of the problems uh, with the analysis uh, of the timing when you when you give the uh, when you make it with uh, with the timing simulations so sta on the other hand provides a faster and simulation way of check and analyzing all the timing pass in the design for any timing violations because you are not applying any input vectors to hit in the sta so your timing analysis will be faster as compared to the simple timing analysis based simulation timing uh, simulation based timing analysis fine so now let us understand how this timing analysis is is performed suppose we are having now uh, some gates are given to us so first we need to understand that when we uh, when this sta is performed then how the things are working so let us say we are given this circuit where we are having some gates g1 g2 g3 g4 so g1 is a nand gate g2 is a buffer g3 is also a buffer and g4 is another two input nand gate in the real designs we uh, these all the gates are associated with some kind of capacitances whether this is inside the chip or whether this is in the pc in on the pcb when you have the different ic's of different nand gates and buffers then outputs of the ic's as well as the input of the ic's will be having some kind of capacitances associated with these inputs and output nodes so here cs1 is the uh, is the capacitance at the output node of nand gate g1 similarly buffers g2 and g3 will have the capacitances cs2 and cs3 available at the inputs of these gates similarly g4 will have g4 nand gate will have a capacitance at the input of the input of the g4 so that is shown here by cs4 so it means at the output of g1 nand gate we are having cs1 and this output of nand gate g1 is connected to the different different gates for the g2 g3 and g4 so see here it is clear that cs2 cs3 and cs4 is coming in parallel to cs1 right because output of g1 is connected to the input of these three different gates so it means all the capacitances of these all the input capacitances of g2 g3 and g4 will come in parallel to the output gate of g1 
so it means now i am having a capacitance at the g1 gate that is total capacitance will be the cs1 value plus cs2 plus cs3 plus cs4 because these all the capacitances above terminal is connected to the common terminal of uh, output terminal of g1 where cs1 is already connected so this is our real modeling of the gates so whenever we are dealing with the distal gates or any other flip flops we are always always associated we uh, we are always having some kind of uh, capacitances at the output nodes as well as the input nodes of the next gates right so now here g1 is grind uh, gate is driving the multiple gates that i have already discussed with you so now the capacitance on the output of the cell is the sum of all the capacitances sum of all the input capacitances of the cell that it is driving plus the sum of the capacitance of all the wire segment that comprise the net plus the output capacitance of the driving cell it means that g1 is connected to the different wires means different gates through a wire so this wire will also have a some kind of capacitance with it because a wire is nothing but a metal line metal is having some kind of isolation beneath it isolation layer beneath it so that causes some kind of wiring capacitance also so it means my total capacitance at the output of g1 will be cs1 plus the input gate input capacitance of g2 cs2 plus the input capacitance of gate g3 that is cs3 plus the input capacitance of g4 that is cs4 plus the wiring capacitance the capacitance associated with the wire that is connecting the one gate with the another gates okay so it means my total capacitance at the output of g1 will be what it will be cl1 that is the output capacitance at the gate g1 will be sum of all the capacitances plus the wiring capacitance so cl1 is cs1 plus cs2 plus cs3 plus cs4 plus cw where cw is the wiring capacitance okay so it must be always uh, it must be clear that whenever we are connecting one gate with the another gates there will be always some kind of wiring capacitance that is connecting the one gate with the another second will be the the uh, uh, capacitances at the output of the particular gate that is driving driving the other gates and the input capacitance of the next gates so this gate this capacitance is now at the output of g1 gate cl1 okay so this capacitance cl1 now needs to be needs to be charged and discharged with the cell g1 switches so it means now that my output capacitance of g1 is now cl1 and cl1 is nothing but the capacitance of sum of the capacitances of cs1 plus cs2 plus cs3 plus cs4 plus the c wiring capacitance fine so whenever g1 will switch means from zero output of g1 will switch from zero to one it means when output is zero it means this cl1 has discharged completely and when output of g1 will be one it means cl1 has charged completely because now output of g1 is if one logic one it means one one of the plate of the capacitance cl1 is logic one and below is ground it means it is now fully charged with the voltage across it uh, at logic one so logic one is generally considered as the supply voltage that we apply to our circuits fine so it means whenever the g1 will switch the capacitance cl1 will either charge or either discharge fine that we need to understand from this gate level modeling so now so does the total capacitance value will impact the timing of the cell g1 because now it will take some time to charge this capacitance cell cl1 and discharge this capacitance cl2 now we will see how this charging and discharging is now associated with some rc c is there cl1 now we will see how the r is coming into play 
and that r will cause some kind of rc in the circuit and that rc will give the timing constant and how the timing will be now uh, timing will come in the picture so now there is there occurs a rc also so one thing is that cl1 is there at the output node of gate g1 and there will be r also this r is the resistance offered by the inner transistors of the gate g1 and the wiring resistance of the metal track in pcb or inside the gate g1 so it means that inside the chip it means that when g1 will discharge a charge it means its output is either connect is output is either zero or either logic one so when cs1 is charging this charging will take place through the internal transistors so internal transistors will offer some kind of resistance so that resistance is now in combination with the cl1 will make some rc fine so that rc is now called the time constant of the gate g1 so complete rc model of the digital network will be now something like this suppose we are having this gate this digital network in this there are various gates one is having the u and one there is a two input and gate one is a inverter this is that inverter there is a another nor two input nor gate so suppose we are given this digital network here input i1 is connected to this and gate and this i2 input is connected to this inverter and output of this inverter is connected to one of the and gate as well as to the one of the input of a nor gate fine and there is a, again some wire this wire is connected to the output o1 node and output of nor gate is connected to the node o2 so there is now some wires are there some gates are already there so if we model now these kind of digital network now we know already that gates are always having some kind of capacitances they add their inputs as well as their outputs and there are metal wires also so metal wires will also offer some kind of capacitance as well as the resistance of the metal so the complete rc model of a digital this digital network will be something like this it means that there is a wire this wire is connecting i1 input to the gate and one so this wire is now associated with some kind of resistance as well as some kind of capacitance so this is shown by this rc this r is the resistance of this wire and c is the capacitance is associated with this wire that is shown here similarly this capacitance is the capacitance is associated with this wire as well as the capacitance of the input of this gate so this total capacitance is now the capacitance of this wire plus the capacitance associated with this input gate and gate so that is shown here similarly we are having this wire this wire is connected to the input i2 node and also connected to the input of the inverter this inv0 so now again it will have some kind of rc this r is associated with the wire this wire and c is the capacitance of the wire plus as the input capacitance of the gates fine similarly every wire will have a rc similarly this wire will also have the rc so that is shown here similarly this is shown here some by some kind of rc at the output node here and again this wire this wire is having resistance similarly two capacitances are shown at the output node so these are basically the capacitances of the next input gates as well as the capacitance of the wiring plus the output capacitance of this gate so that is shown here fine so this is generally when you connect any probe cro probe to your digital gates then that probe also offers some kind of resistance and capacitance so we we can designate that capacitance here also fine so this is also called the load capacitance of the designs whatever the loads that you are connecting to your outputs output terminals that will be termed as the load capacitances fine so whenever your gates will switch from 0 to 1 they have to either charge this capacitances 
or discharge this capacitance and charging and discharging to take place through the rc r is associated with the wire resistance as well as the resistance internal to the gates that resistance is basically due to the transistors that are the inside the gates so this is the real model of the uh, of the any digital network so this network digital network that we are given here will have this kind of rc model and this happens in every digital designs whether our it is a flip flop whether it is our mux whenever you are connecting one gate with another gate through a wire that wire will offer some kind of resistance as well as there will be capacitances associated with the gates the gates at the output side as well as the capacitance at the at the output of the gate as well as the capacitance at the input of the next gate that the that it is driving suppose we are having this inverter so inverter is already you know that if we in, if the input is given if v in is given to the inverter as zero the output will be one if if input is one then output will be zero so in the timing simulation this will be something like this here this is the timing simulation of the wave of the inverter when the input is zero output is one and when input is one the output is zero and this is the ideal behavior the input is suddenly changing from 0 to 1 and output is also suddenly changing from 1 to 0 right so this is also called the ideal behavior of the inverter but in the real case this inverter will have some kind of node capacitance at the output here and there will be a rc the r will be due to the resistance of the wire as well as the resistance inside the gate inside this gate inverter so that resistance will be offered by the transistors inside the inverter so in the real case my outputs will be something like this so it means when i will apply a input step input from 0 to 1 my output will now take some time to fall from logic 1 to logic 0 it is not falling suddenly now as it was the case of ideal ideal behavior in the ideal behavior when my input was changing from 0 to 1 output was suddenly falling from 1 to 0 at a zero instant time but in the real case because there is a rc associated with the gate so it will take some time for the output to fall from 1 to 0 as well as it will take some time to for the output to move from 0 to 1 right so this is the exponential behavior this exponential behavior is due to the rc associated with the with the inverter at the output node fine now see here if i if i if i consider is that when i am changing the input from 0 to 1 the output is taking some time to move from 1 to 0 so that will be also called the delay of the circuit now so in the ideal case there is no delay the uh, input and outputs are changing suddenly but in the real case output is taking some time for the uh, 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 to move it from logic 1 to logic 0 so it means now there is a delay in the circuit fine and that delay is defined as the time difference between the 50% of the input to the 50% of the output plus similarly uh, the delay is also defined at the output side when the output is moving from logic 1 to logic 0 to logic 1 similarly here it will be the time difference it will be the time difference when the input was 50% and output goes to 50% that time difference will be the delay when the output will move from logic 0 to logic 1 and average time will be or total time will be the average of these two times this time and this time divided by 2 that will be the total delay of the circuit or the average delay of the circuit so next lesson next we will discuss of the path delay how we define the path delay so the total delay for the logic to propagate through a logic path is referred to as the path delay so whatever the uh, whatever the digital network we are given to us what is the total delay from input to the output that will be the in a path will be considered as a path delay since there are the multiple paths to the destination from the inputs so maximum minimum timing to the destination points are generally considered 
okay it means if we are having inputs and the outputs and there are multiple paths between these two so we will first find the maximum path delay or maximum path which is having the larger delay as well as the path which is having the minimum delay so the max path between the two end points is the path with the largest delay and is also referred to as the longest path similarly there will be a path called min path it is the path with the smallest delay or the also referred to as the shortest path fine so we will saw see it with the help of the example now how we define the max path and the min path so suppose this some digital network is given to us so in this digital network we are having these two flip flops so they are having some inputs and there is a digital combinational logic here it is consisting of the or gates nand gate buffer or other other gates also and there is a flip flop at the end here you have you have three now see here from the output of this flip flop uff1 there is a path to the input of the next flip flop right this is path this path is having this gate as well as this gate so there are two gates in this path from this path to this path this this node to this node see here there is a another path that is connecting the output of this flip flop to the input of this flip flop again through that path through this path this path this path this path and this path fine now out of these two paths which is having the larger gate more gates is this path it is having four gates fine so it means now if there are some delays in the gates it means this will have the larger delay and this will have a shorter shorter delay so this is called the min path and this will called the max path that path with the larger delays and path with the minimum delay is called the min path fine similarly for this flip flop the output is connected through this gate this gate this gate and this gate so this path will have this path this 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 loop or this means this node will be connected to this node through this path right so it will it is only having the single path so this is how we define the min path and max path max path will consist of the maximum number of gates and main path will get the lesser number of gates okay now see here we are let us say given this network in this network we are having this input i n and this input this input is connected to the node n0 through a wire and this wire is connected to further inverter this inverter u i n v a and it is again connected to further inverter u i n b through a wire n1 and similarly further this inverter is connected to this inverter through a wire n2 and similarly further there is a load capacitance at the output of the entire digital network so it means from this input to this output it will have the wiring delays as well as the delays of the gates these two gates so here tn0 and t tn0 ta tn1 all these are the all these are telling the timing that input will take some time to move from this node to this node similarly it will take some time to move the voltage from this to this similarly it will take some time to move the signal from this node to this node and that time is tn1 similarly the it will take some uh, time for the output to for the signal to move from this to this that time is tb fine <coughs> so tnx re represent the delay due to the wire of the nx node so tn tn0 tn1 tn2 tn3 all all related to the timing of the wirings mean delay of the wirings and t8bc is the delay of the gates so the total delay from input to the output is the sum of all the delays or some of all the timings so this is how we uh, can compute the delay of a given circuit when some input is given and we find out the output at the output node now let us take an example of our sr flip flop 
and here now the delays are given to us so we are ever here having two uh, nor gates and let us say 1.4 unit time is the delay of the these two nor gates q and q bar are is output so its two table will be something like this we always already uh, ha, uh, know this so whenever input is 0 0 if present state is 0 then output will be 0 whenever the input is 0 0 and if the present state is 1 the output is uh, if the present state is 1 then output is also next state is also 1 it means my next state is the pre present state if input is 0 0 when input is 0 1 whatever the present state the next state will be 0 If present state is one zero, then whatever the next state, uh, whatever the present state, next state will be one. And whenever it is one one, whatever the present state, due to the NOR gates, the output will be zero zero. So both now here Q and Q bar are not complementary to each other, and we generally avoid this condition. Now let us understand this with respect to some timing simulations. So here now we are given that gates are having some kind of delay. and that delay is given to us 1.4 unit time this can be 1.4 nanosecond 1.4 microsecond depending on the gate so let us understand this here initially s is 0 and r is 0 and let us say initial condition of q and q bar is 0 1 so initially output q is 0 and q bar is 1 at this time instant my input s is moving from 0 to 1 and output is still 0 so it means this input has moved from 0 to 1 and this is still 0 right this is a nor gate and you know if any of the input of nor gate is 1 the output it becomes immediately 0 now because here the delay of the gate is 1.4 unit time so i will get the output q bar after 1.4 unit time right so it is shown here that because s is moving from 0 to 1 and if any of the input of a nor gate is one the output will become zero it means q bar will become zero so here now q bar is moving from 1 to 0 after 1.4 unit time the input becomes uh, input has become input has become uh, move from 0 to 1 so this is that now now it is zero uh, after 1.4 unit time so this zero will come here and uh, r is already zero This R is already zero, so after further 1.4 unit time, the Q will become one because now both the inputs are zero zero, so output will become one after 1.4 unit time further. So it means after Q bar becomes zero from S when S becomes zero to one, so further after 1.4 unit time, this Q will become one. It means now Q will become one after 2.8 unit time. from the time the input becomes input moves from 0 to 1 in s input so this is shown here similarly here when s becomes 0 r is also 0 so from the table when s and r are 0 the next state will be the present state so it means when s and r are 0 0 the next state will be the present state now see here this time when r is moving from 0 to 1 it means r is moving from 0 to 1 so now after 1.4 unit time q will become zero so this is here shown when r is moving from 0 to 1 and s is still zero my q is moving from 1 to 0 after 1.4 unit time fine so now it has become zero and s is still zero so this zero will come here and after further 1.4 nano the q will become q bar will become one because now both the inputs are zero zero so q will q bar will be one so this q bar will be one after 1.4 unit time further so it means from r when r becomes zero to one it will take a total of 2.8 unit time for the q bar to move from zero to one similarly further it will behave like this so i suggest you to go through this through this timing analysis when we are given some kind of delays inside the circuit it is generally asked in the interviews when some timing is given to some timing delays are given to us in our gates and we have been told to analyze the circuit so we can analyze this sr flip flop from the table and with respect to the delays also fine similarly 
same uh, uh, analysis will be done when uh, we are having the SR flip flop with uh, it, uh, when it is designed with the NAND gates. Okay. So now the uh, we will uh, discuss about the clock related timings. So when our circuit is uh, uh, we are having some kind of clocks in our circuit, then some new uh, definitions come in the picture. So far it was related to the combination circuits. So in the combination circuit, when we give the input, the output is reflected after some delays and that delay is the delay of the gates. Fine. So whenever, when now we have a clock in our circuits, then we are having some definitions. Suppose this is a circuit. In this circuit, we are having various flip-flops. There are flip-flops at the output and there is a PLL. This PLL is a phase lock loop. This is a circuit which generates a stable clock to our circuits. In the microprocessors like i5, i7 or core, core to do or your other Pentium processors, we mostly, we generally use a PLL circuit inside. That PLL circuit generates a stable clock to our various blocks in the processors. Now from this PLL, a clock is generating this clock is moving through the different buffers to our flip-flops. Now we are having these buffers. These buffers are basically increasing the driving capability of the clock. This clock is going to the different flip-flops. So we need to increase the strength of the clock as it moves across the design. So these buffers are used for that purpose. Now for the clock, there is a term that is called the clock latency. This clock latency is defined as the total time it takes from the clock source to the end point. It means the time it is taking from the clock source to the point it is reaching its end point. So that total time will be the clock latency. Similarly here, for here, the clock latency will be the time the clock is generating from here and it reaches here. That will be the clock latency for this path. Similarly, there will be a clock latency for this path also. And that path will have the total delay of the delay of these gates as well as the delay, delay associated with the wires. Fine. Similarly, there is another term. That term is called the clock skew. So clock skew is defined as the difference in arrival times at the end points of the clock tree. It means this is the difference in arrival times at the end points. See here now. The time it is arriving here and the time it arrives here. The difference between these two points will be called the clock skew between these two points. Similarly, there will be a clock skew between these two points. The time clock reaches here, then time clock reaches here. So that will be the clock skew between these two points. Fine. So these two terms are uh, different from each other. One is the clock latency. So clock latency is the timing difference between the start point and the end point, right? From the clock source to the end point. Similarly, clock, uh, but the clock skew is the difference in arrival times at the end points. So this is associated with the end points. So one will be the clock skew here, another will be the clock skew here. Fine. So this is uh, our clock related definitions. Next, we are having timing considerations for the sequential cells. So in the sequential cells, we are having clocks also and some inputs to the circuits and uh, input to the cells. Let us say we have this D flip flop. In this D flip flop, input is D, output is Q and clock is there. And it is a positive and triggered flip flop. So now 